How's everyone doing? Um, happy middle of the week, also known as Wednesday. Um, so I've wanted to talk about a concept that I have. Um, um, probably heard it sometimes. It's called conversational guitar. So when people say that uh, music is about communication and you're having a conversation. Um, and um, I think that there are some guitarists who actually do a really, really good job about having a conversation. And actually, when I say conversation, I'm talking about they play very lyrically. Um, even if you're playing something that is um, basically written straight off the charts and you're not improvising per se, there are certain musicians that can transcend this stuff and they play it lyrically. They play it as if it's very natural. That means, um, that is what I mean by when I say it's a conversation. And um, there are a couple of people I think that fits that boat and some of them may be atypical, at least for this channel. I don't really talk a lot about them. Um, I would call uh, people like John Schofield, um, Santana, Bill Frizzell, and Jim Hall. They fall into what I would call conversational guitars. Um, some other instrumentalists um, that I consider conversational uh, musicians, uh, musicians are Keith Jarrett. If you listen to the Cologne concert, that's a total conversation. Horn players like Miles Davis and Art Farmer. So, okay. So let's kind of peel the onion back a little bit. What do I mean by when I say conversation other than it's just a form of communication, which everybody knows that's what music is all about. I mean that um, it's very natural. Um, it's like breathing. And in order for something to be a conversation to me, even musically, there are a couple of traits that I kind of look, look at. And uh, the first one is that first, if you're gonna open your mouth, if you're gonna speak or have a conversation, it usually has to be something very meaningful, okay? So a lot of times having a good conversation means not saying anything. And music is the same way. So if you notice a lot of the people that are missing at least from that are not really bebop oriented. It might be part of the bebop stuff, but stylistically, um, you know, they are meaningful in terms of their statement musically. By that, I mean they're conveying something it could, as important as it could be sadness, it could be happiness, it could be ap apathy, it could be love. But they have something of substance um, to say, okay? There's an African proverb that says, empty drums make the loudest noises. And sometimes the player who plays the loudest, the player who plays the fastest, um, are really not saying much. They're not having a conversation. They're just saying, hey, look at me, I have a lot of chops. These folks, Schofield, Santana, Frizzell, Jim Hall, Jarrett, uh, Davis, Artform, they all fall into that category. It's not about the chops. It's about 
the message and it's about saying something that's meaningful. So that's the first thing. The second one is again, chops. They're devoid of chops. Um, they're not about that. It's, um, you know, there's a lot of really good spacing, a lot of, um, 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 you know, they give other musicians room to improvise. They don't play over them. They play in, with them, they compliment them, and they say something of substance on that. So that's what sets them apart. Um, so it's not uh, a plethora of notes, uh, you know, and it's not, it's not fancy language, right? You know, if you, if you, I don't know if you've ever been around somebody who maybe is not the smartest person, but I don't know, they bought a dictionary, and they start opening it, and every big words that they see, they start using it. So I say, hey, you're a loquacious speaker. Uh, you're a parsimonious person. It's like, what the hell is that? Or what are you talking about? They're not like that. They're not trying to impress you with the big words. They're not trying to impress you with the fast playing. They're trying to say something meaningful, and they, their spacing is good, and they're giving room to um, the other musicians to play. So that's the second element. So obviously, one, they have something meaningful to say. Two, um, devoid of chops for the most part. The third one is that they understand themselves. I feel like all of those musicians have, they've done a certain amount of self-reflection. By that, I mean, they know to stay in their lane. It's not like uh, Bill Frizzell is going to come out there and try to play like Al Di Miola or like Pat Martino or anything like that. They've gone through that, um, um, I think, the exercise and they've gone to the self-learning. Um, I heard that like, you know, somebody like Jim Hall tried a lot of like pedals and things like that. At the end of the day, they come back to who they are and they feel very, very comfortable. And that's something that's very hard and difficult for me, myself and most musicians and uh, uh, kind of uh, learn. You kind of like want to be a fast player. Like I grew up, I wanted to be Van Halen. I wanted to be George Benson. And at some point I realized, OK, I don't have that type of a skill set, but I'm pretty decent with chords and melody and things like that. So I gravitate towards my strength. So I've done my self-reflection and all these guys have done that so they understand themselves and that's what makes them a good conversational guitarist a good conversational musicians um the 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 fourth thing is the best of them all they're all great storytellers if you listen to from the non um guitarist standpoint like keith jarrett's cologne concerts and stuff it's so well written and i know it's supposed to be all improvisation there's a beginning a middle and an end. It's a beautiful story that he weaves through that. And if you listen to Bill Frizzell's solos, if you listen to Jim Hall play, and even Schofield, uh, all of these guys, Santana, it's like a call and response. They're telling a story and they're telling a great story. Uh, and, 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 and that's part of, to me, what a great conversational musician or guitarist does. And all of those folks do that. And the last one for me is I can listen to them without having to pick up my guitar. OK, I get fascinated by people who are sometimes very chop oriented and I say, wow, what did they just do? And I pick up my guitar and I try to imitate it and do that. It's just good music when I listen to Frizzell. I'm not trying to say I don't try to deconstruct it and play it, but for the most part, I can sit there, you know, and just kind of sit and listen and chill and let it absorb me. I could be in the car listening to it there people I want to listen to, musicians I want to listen to, regardless of the guitar. I don't even view Miles Davis as a horn player. I don't view Bill Frizzell as a guitarist, even though Schofield and them, I view them as musicians because they have something very meaningful, which is the first part to say. So anyway, again, these are the things I think uh, personally, and it's obviously biased, it's one man's opinion, uh, what makes a good conversational guitarist and these are some of the things we should try to infuse in our playing you know have something meaningful to say um, don't play as if like you just learned the fastest slick around um, so don't play with chops you know um, understand yourself your strengths and your limitations and gravitate towards your strengths um, yeah learn some skill sets to become a good storyteller and yeah and Hopefully, at some point, we all can be great conversational, or at least strive to be very, very good conversational musicians and guitarists. All right, then. Thank you for watching, and always practice, practice, and practice some more.